Hi guys, so recently I got this game called Noita, and it's a really cool game. It's like they took the physics from those popular sand falling games like Powder Toy and made it into an actual game. If you haven't played Noita, then it's a game where every pixel is simulated, meaning every pixel in the world can be destroyed or burned, but there is also sand and water simulations too. So in this video, I'm going to be exploring how the tech behind sand falling games like these work. So sand falling games are actually a type of cellular automation. One popular example of cellular automation is Conway's Game of Life. In Conway's Game of Life, there is a grid and each cell in the grid can either be dead or alive. Each frame, every cell in the grid is iterated through and for each cell, these rules are applied. The way sand falling simulations work is very similar to this. Here are the rules for sand. First, check the cell below the sand pixel. If it is air, then set the sand pixel to air, and the air below it to sand. This will make it look like the sand moved down a cell. With just that rule, this is what it looks like. The second rule is if the sand can't move directly down because the space below it is filled, then it will move diagonally down left or right. And that's it. Water is the same except instead of looking diagonally down, it will look to the spaces beside it to move. And now with those simple rules, this is the result. This is really cool, but one problem that I noticed is that the sand doesn't sink in the water, which isn't very realistic. So what I do to fix this issue is I set the density of each particle type, and then if the particle below it is less dense, then it'll be able to switch places with that particle. And now this looks a lot better. Another thing that was bothering me was the fact that every particle can only move one space at a time so particles cannot accelerate while falling. So I made each particle be a separate object, and now I can add velocity to the simulation. Now that I made this change, I can also make the particles be more than one color, which I think just makes it look a little bit better. And so now, as you can see, the particles fall in a more realistic way. I want to make sand look a little bit more realistic because in real life, sand doesn't form perfect pyramid shapes, so I made it so that when sand hits the ground from a big fall, some of its downward velocity gets turned into sideways velocity, and then friction slows it down. I also added inertia to solid so they will have a chance to stop spreading out. Now with these changes I can have multiple different types of solids. One optimization I did to produce better performance was separating the world into small chunks like 10 pixels by 10 pixels and only the chunks that 
have moving cells in them will be updated. So if a chunk only contains stationary particles or particles that are at rest, then we will not iterate through the pixels in that chunk. This makes it run at a much higher frame rate. Next, I wanted to add some more advanced particle types, so I added chemical reactions. Now, when lava and water touch, they turn into stone. And now with this, I was also able to make acid, which is a liquid that can burn through almost everything. I really like the acid because it leaves these really cool shapes behind when it burns through solids. And it burns through different materials at different speeds. I added fire and I'm really happy with the way it looks. I made it kind of look like fire by making the particles that aren't burning rise up so it looks like flames. Then when the fire burns out it has a chance to turn into smoke. Smoke acts just like water but upside down. All I have to do is set the flammability chance for each particle and will burn when there is fire near it. Different elements burn at different speeds. I should probably mention what I used to program this. I first tried using Unity, and I have a few videos of those on the channel, but since there is no way of directly setting the pixels on the screen, I had to use a texture, which was really slow. So instead, in this video I used the Java version of processing, because it is really easy to set and check pixels. I read somewhere that Java runs faster on Windows, then on Mac, which is what I coded this on, so I built it and played it on my Windows PC. That's what this clip is. It's actually so much faster, it kind of feels like it's too fast and not realistic, but the wire spreads out so smoothly, so I like it. In a future upload, I plan to try to multi-thread the simulation so that multiple chunks can be updated at the same time to improve performance, or maybe add a player to make an actual game. So if you want to see any of that, then consider subscribing, and also if you have any questions or ideas of about what I should do in the next video, tell me in the comments or in my Discord.
I'm trying to put more effort into these videos to make them better quality compared to my previous videos on the channel, so if you enjoyed, leaving a like would be really helpful. But that's pretty much it for the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.